Dear teachers, I send you greetings from National Teaching Council headquarters in Accra. I am Laurie Chapon, the Deputy Registrar of National Teaching Council and Coordinator of Mentoring Coaching Program. Over the past three years, we've been engaging your directors, the school managers such as the CISOs and then the heads of schools on this particular project, Mentoring Coaching. Today, I'm here to also interact directly with you as we introduce you formally to the Mentoring Coaching Program. We tax the CISOs to take you through the Mentoring Coaching training so that you can better enhance your competences in order to improve learning outcome in our schools. This is extension of that mentoring coaching training program that you'll be having with your CISOs and the, the heads of schools. The purpose for this program is to build your capacity so that you can also improve teaching and learning outcomes in your school. And to improve your capacity, we believe that uh, the school managers, school leaders, your supervisors should not be witch hunters or fault finders. They have to use coaching and mentoring processes to take you through or to support you to overcome your difficulties so that you can deliver effectively to improve the learning attainments in our school. Stakeholders who are supporting the implementation of mentoring and coaching programs in our schools include your head who act as a mentor, your CISO who act as a coach, you yourself who sometimes act as a mentee when you're meeting your, uh, your heads, and then also act as a coachee when you're meeting your CISOs. We have gone the case service, your employer, that will be coming around to monitor how you are implementing what you have learned, uh, you have learned, and how the coach the mentoring program has been implemented in, uh, in, the, uh, in the schools. NTC, the lead implementer of the mentoring coaching program, will also from time to time call for data on how they to monitor the implementation progress. Last year, as part of their uh, inspection program, we we'll also find out how you are implementing mentoring coaching right from the mentoring coaching session to teaching and learning. And we have the independent uh, verification agent or verifying agent who is also engaged by World Bank to monitor how we are implementing mentoring coaching program. So these um, Institutions that the DES, NTC, NASIA, and the independent verifying agent will be coming to you to find out how you are implementing mentoring coaching. What goes into mentoring coaching in Ghana? Ghana, we have defined, we have designed a mentoring coaching framework that defines how mentoring coaching should be done as a country. The framework has four pillars, and each pillar has descriptions and the goal for that pillar, as well as indicators that will help us to check whether the mentors and the, uh, the mentees are really going through the mentoring coaching program and that they are implementing what's expected of them. And for each indicators, there are references attached to some of the key competencies which are embedded in the indicators. The framework also helps you to understand mentoring coaching processes, how mentoring coaching should be done, the kind of a release that is to exist between the mentor, mentee, or the coach and the coachee, the kind of language, the posture, and everything. We also take you through mentoring coaching models, such as mentoring and coaching for high performance model, clinical supervision model, reflective practitioner model, and action research. So I can better understand what was mentoring coaching programs. Going to a bit uh, detail or take, give you the highlights, we, the, when you take the mentoring coaching framework, this is how it is structured. The pillars are being described in the framework. 
with text and then pictorial view of the framework itself. And then the text also highlights on the competencies that every teacher must acquire after going through a particular track of a pillar. And there are some indicators that help us to also measure whether the mentor or the coach is really uh, performing his or her role as a mentor or as a coach. And if they are performing that role, then there's something that the child must be able to exhibit. So in, in the event where the child is not able to exhibit those competences, there are something that the mentor or the coach is not doing the work. For example, if you take pillar one, which is about knowledge and understanding of the school curriculum, the strands are four. The first one is learning and development. And there are some competencies that teachers must acquire in order to support learning and development of lessons. So if at the end of the mentoring coaching program, the teacher is not able to, let's say, exhibit that competencies under the learning and development, then it becomes a worrisome. And one may want to say that the mentor didn't do the work. For example, after going through, let's say, uh, the learning development, he said that the mentor and the coach support mentee to demonstrate familiarity with the education systems and key policies guidance. So if a teacher is not able to demonstrate familiarity with the education system and the key policies guiding it, it means that the mentor didn't do his or her work. Another competency he says that the mentor or the coach support mentee to gain a comprehensive knowledge of the official school curriculum, including learning outcomes for matter knowledge of the curriculum. So if the teacher is not able to comprehend the knowledge of the official school curriculum, if the teacher is not able to come out or demonstrate proficiency in the front matter knowledge of the curriculum, then it means the mentor has not done any work. When you go to assessment, to assessment has indicators there. When you go to teaching and learning, there are some indicators there. For example, under teaching and learning, say that mentor or coach support the mentee to develop the ability to select, adapt, or develop pedagogical materials to meet learning objectives and student learning needs. The next one says that mentor or the coach support the mentee to prepare schemes of learning for a given academic year, term, or week. So if the mentee is not able to prepare scheme of learning for a given academic year, term or a week, then the mentor is assumed not to have done his or her work. So these are the indicators that will guide the mentors. The next pillar, pillar two, we have what is called knowledge and understanding of the learner and its implication for teaching. Here there's only one strand, and that strand is knowledge of the learner and managing the learning environment. So that pillar also exposes the teacher to how to understand individual differences and the learning styles that exist among learners. So the teacher can prepare the learning environment to suit the needs of the learner. In other words, it's like a cut the targeted instruction. You have to target each learner and differentiate uh, or customize the learning style or the teaching style that will help the learner to also uh, accommodate the concept assimilated effectively in order to also improve upon his or her competences so as to be fit well in the society. The third pillar is the knowledge of the school, which has two strands, school as a community and school health and sanitation. And as I always mention, each of them has competencies that the teacher must exhibit. And it takes the work of the, the mentor, who is the head of the school, or the coach, who is the CISO, to support the teacher to grasp that concept 
in order to be able to deliver effectively. So when you go to the knowledge of the school, for example, I will say that the mentor or the coach support the mentee to become familiar with the vision and mission of the school. Support the mentee to apply the legal and ethical teacher code of conduct in his or her practice as a professional teacher. Then the next one says that a mentor and coach support the mentee to critically and collectively reflect to improve teaching and learning. And at the end of these points, you see references from NTS and Critical Policy over there. So that is how the document is structured. If as a teacher you are not able to perform the indicators there, what it means is that uh, you are not supporting learners to improve their learning. And also it means that the teachers and then the heads of schools are also not helping you to also um, support the learners. So, so, as I mentioned, the fourth pillar is knowledge and understanding of school community relations. And there's only one strand there. The strand is the school, the school and the community. To end my presentation, what I also want to say is that when you get the mentor coaching framework and you go through step by step when you get to page 15 you also see knowledge and understanding of mentoring and coaching models so it takes you through the various models and how they can be implemented so uh, the question now is who initiates mentoring coaching process in the school it's two ways Either the teacher, as a teacher, you identify some gaps or some challenges that you may want support from your CISO or from your head. So then you have to initiate the discussion from there. On the other hand, if the head or the CISO also comes around during their monitoring session and they also identify some challenges, they can also start the discussion and engage you in the mentoring coaching process that will help you to overcome those challenges. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I will suggest that you go through the rest of the model in order to get comprehensive understanding of the mentoring coaching training program for Gallup. Thank you and have a wonderful